let me put up a chart. The S&P 500 E-mini futures. Let's do daily. How about that? We'll take the fibs off. And even this, because I want to reconstruct it with you as you watch. Now, if you can't see the chart, go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side, click that big microphone, follow the instructions. In about 30 seconds, you'll be registered. That's going to give you one-click access to the show each and every day. On the days you're out of the office, away from your desktop, just point any internet connected browser to youtube.com slash CFRN slash live, and there you will find a live, real time simulcast of the show as it unfolds, brought to you by the good folks at YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Okay. S&P 500 daily chart. This arrow pointing down does not reflect what the market's currently doing, does it? So let's let's talk about what we've been talking about. Okay. We had this big sell-off back in July. It began July 30th, and it ended on August the 6th. So then we went from support to resistance, back to support, back to resistance, back to support, back to resistance. And here's where the dynamic changed. We did not go all the way back to support. Buyers came in right here. Now, what does this have to do with this? Oh, just everything, but we'll get into that later. <clears throat> Buyers come in. We now have new support, which is old resistance, yeah. Pushes us up through this resistance. We fail to put in a new all-time historic high. The all-time historic high is right there. Didn't quite make it. Got a little double top going here. You could call it a triple top. Some might see it as a quadruple top. Whatever. Down we come. We hit this area that was resistance, 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 resistance. And lo and behold, it becomes support. We bounce about 40 points. Sellers push it back down into that area again. This time they succeed in pushing it through. Buyers step in here. Why here? We'll get to that. <clears throat> Buyers push it back up into this same area of resistance. Remember, important prices, important areas are almost always tested. On a daily chart, on a weekly chart. On a one-minute chart, on a 30-minute chart. On a range chart, on a volume chart. No matter what market you're looking at, no matter what time frame you're using, the clock on the wall is always price. Now, <clears throat> buyers step back in here because why? Well, this one is easily explained. We have a new area. Come on. We have a new area. I think what we need is a new computer, but I digress. Come on, let me draw a little, let me draw a little bit. It's, it's just us, come on. There it goes. Uh, let me get the circle out of the way for now. I'm oh, sorry, the ellipse. <clears throat> okay. You go, well, isn't that just kind of the same as this? Very good. Yeah, we spiked it a little bit. Buyers come in, run it back up into resistance. Sellers take the ball back down the field into this new support area. 
They fumble the ball. Buyers scoop it up and make a dash right back up into this area of resistance. Okay, we better extend that baby out a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So critical point. We talked about this yesterday. We talked about the two scenarios that could unfold. One being, remember I went leg, retrace, leg, or is it leg, retrace, leg? Yeah, you would, right? I can sit here all day, that phone won't ring until I get on the radio. So really we deserve another arrow here, okay? So, as somebody just said, oh, wait, he's so clever. He just said it could either go up or go down. You move to the head of the class because <clears throat> you're right. That's exactly what I said. It's exactly what I meant. And I don't care how complicated and how convoluted all these vendors try to make it with their magical indicators and mystical oscillators and secrets found in an urn in a cave in the Gobi Desert. Bottom line, price is either going up or going down. Yeah, it may waddle sideways for a bit, but ultimately, I mean, look at any historical chart of any market since its inception. Over time, price goes higher. Every chart you look at, if you look at a historical chart all the way back to the inception of that market, it's going to start in the lower left-hand corner. Of, 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 the, of the screen of the chart up to the upper right hand corner that little that little tidbit right there which now that I said it you go like well duh okay yeah well that's really valuable some of the duh stuff we stumble across <clears throat> it's so valuable nobody ever notices it they just walk right past it they're so busy digging for gold <clears throat> They don't see the big nugget that they've propped their lunchbox up on to eat lunch. True story. All right. So, now that I've revealed the secret of the universe, price is either going higher or lower, let's get real. That is real, but... So, what has to happen here? Price has to overcome this obstacle. Resistance, 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 resistance. It's got to overcome that. And then I'm going to see it hold on a pullback. And then that validates this arrow. However, if this, in fact, becomes good resistance again, like it was here and here and here and here, and yes, even here, that'll validate this arrow. Okay? Now, I understand that seems very simplistic, uh, very elementary, if you will. Well, this is all simple by design. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of time, a lot of treasure to simplify this thing. Except once we arrived at simple, we realized simple had been there all along. We just had to get all the stuff out of the way so we could see simple <clears throat> and be simple and trade simple. Okay, we break above this area, we hold it on a pullback, now the door is open to go challenge this high and even the all-time historic high. If we find the resistance here, the market will turn down, we'll come back into this area of good support, which will either hold or it won't. If it doesn't hold, We'll take out this swing low and come back into this area of support, which has been good support since August the 5th. That's what's going to happen. There are very few absolutes in the world of trading. But I absolutely positively promise you, one of those two scenarios will unfold. I'm not pulling your leg. Now, let's look at a 30-minute chart real quick. Okay, this is daily. I'm going to go to the S&P on the 30-minute. Yesterday, 
you and I were having a conversation <clears throat> about this time right here. Uh, let's see. They're probably about, right about right here, right? And, and I, I handed out one of my absolutes yesterday. <clears throat> I said, there are very few absolutes in the world of trading, but I absolutely positively assure you <clears throat> that by the time we speak again tomorrow, that's the day, price will have either <clears throat> found its way up to this zone above us or the zone below us. That's very simplistic, very elementary, but, but look what happened. We didn't get all the way to the zone on this move. <clears throat> we got there on this move. And now we've got there. I didn't say we'll visit both, <clears throat> but because we were kind of stalling, rolling sideways, and remember, sideways only lasts for a season. So there was two-sided action. We almost touched the zone there. Zones are an area. Came back, consolidated. Hit the zone below. Right back up to the zone. Right back down. Right back up. Consolidation for <clears throat> goodness. This consolidation started in earnest <clears throat> at 2200 hours last evening. For you non military folk, that's <clears throat> 10 p.m. Eastern. And we didn't break out of that until this morning at the Wall Street Open. Overnight, Globex trading. Uh, it's nice. Very few people are even aware of it. You know, I mean, they kind of know it's a, it's there, but for them, it's it's not really a thing. For us, it's very much a thing. It used to be back in the day, Globex was a shadow market. Yeah, it, you know, it was there, but it, it had no far-reaching ramifications. Certainly, major market moves did not begin or end on Globex. No longer the case. Go look at your charts. Quite often, major market moves, major turning points happen on the Globex session. Last night, we just had the dreaded sideways roll. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to turn them all off, okay? So we won't be bothered for a while. Okay. So we rolled sideways from 10 o'clock last night to 9.30 this morning. It's almost 12 hours. Half a session. More than, more than half. No. Yeah, whatever. Do the math. Now, <clears throat> after all this consolidation, this is price making up its mind what it's going to do. All of our traders this morning, well, let me back up. When this happened, all of our traders instinctively knew, those who have been with us more than a few weeks, instinctively knew that price was trying to get to this zone below. And then after this consolidation, they instinctively knew when price made up its mind and had decided on a destination. Now, when the market decides on a destination, it doesn't mean it's going to get there 100% of the time, as evidenced here. Price clearly trying to get to that zone overhead. Oh, did I mention price is always trying to get to a weekly trading zone from the Sunday night Globex open at 6 p.m. Eastern. So Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern, price is trying to get to a zone. Sometimes it nails it. Sometimes it comes a little bit shy. Sometimes it'll spike it a little bit. Doesn't change the fact this is a market on a mission. Now, this framework that you see on my chart these zones, as we call them, these numbers are provided to our traders every Monday morning. 
6.15 a.m. Eastern. This way everybody has plenty of time to get them on their chart before the Wall Street, before Wall Street even wakes up on Monday morning, our traders are ready to go. <clears throat> it's been said our traders get more points by 9 a.m. than some traders get all day. All right. So, if they knew this was coming, and if they knew that was coming, it seems like some pretty profitable information, right? Knowledge of great value. Am I trying to, I'm trying to tell you that we know what's going to happen next. I'm not because we don't, we may be the only, we may be the only e-mini training organization on the planet <clears throat> that readily, openly admits we don't know what's going to happen next. Apparently everybody else does. Because I've been to the websites, I get the emails just like you. They all say, hey, we got the crystal balls, we got the magic. We don't have any magic. <clears throat> See, the problem I have with this whole business of trying to know the future <clears throat> is it runs contrary to what I read in this great book. <clears throat> One of the chapters in that book is called Genesis. God made a man called Adam. And when God created Adam, he did not put in the ability to change the past or know the future. And those two are inextricably linked for eternity. So everybody says, well, if you don't know what's going to happen next, what good are you? Eh. While we readily admit we don't know what will happen next, nor does anyone else, <clears throat> What we do know is what the next high probability move is. As evidenced by this, and this, and this, and all this. Okay? All right. Let's do this. <clears throat> What's the price trying to do right now? Think about it. Yeah, let, me give you, let me give you a... Let me give you an, uh, a tool, an aid, a clarifier. Now, what I'm about to show you does not predict the future, but it helps you understand what the market's doing and what the next high probability move is. Okay. <clears throat> Price is above this weekly trading zone. Price is above the BBC. What does that mean? BBC just means bull bear cross. Okay. When price is below that green line, we're looking for lower prices. And then when price gets above it, we're looking for higher prices. Very elementary. I understand. Simple by design. So, Right now, <clears throat> since price is above this zone and above the BBC, well, that means that the market is trying to get to the zone overhead, right? It was. It was here, 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 here. So what's this? This is price pulling back reverting to the mean now price always reverts to the mean and in our case the mean is the BBC the green line oh it's just so happens to be hanging out at this concierge trade alert from last night <clears throat> 2925 so we had a leg <clears throat> and a retracement very shallow retracement these are 30 minute candles then another leg, now we're having a retracement. So big picture, yes, price is trying to get to the zone overhead, 
but price rarely travels in a straight line. Every now and then you get one of these. But for the most part, it's leg retrace, leg retrace, leg retrace, leg retrace, see? So right now, price is trying to get back to this weekly trading zone. It's either going to confirm it to be good support or not. Okay. Really what it's hankering to do is to meet up with this. Now, this could drop like a rock and connect. Or we could wobble sideways a bit. In the most perfect world, the one which you and I don't inhabit, <clears throat> This would arrive here just about the time price arrives here. Now, when price approaches a weekly trading zone from above, we expect it to be good support until it isn't. And when price approaches the BBC from above, we also expect that to be good support. So in that perfect world I spoke of, if price winds up here at about the same time the BBC winds up here, we would then expect it to be good support 2x. That opens the door if we find good support on this pullback. Price will then continue on its journey to this zone overhead but it now will have an obstacle in its path that it must overcome to complete the bigger picture mission, okay? So let's say that in this perfect world, price ends up here, the BBC ends up here, buyers come in, they support it, off we go, we're building a leg, building a leg, expect potential resistance here but if we can get above that, hold it on a pullback, then it's almost like a walk in the park, up to 65, 66. That's how I see it. That's my narrative. If you want to learn to see it that way, think about it that way, and execute this way, the journey begins at eminitrainingschool.com. That's where you'll find me, that's where you'll find Michael and Valerie and all the gang. We got some great traders. And by great, uh, they're not all professionally trading for a living yet. Not all of them, no. But man, they're nice people. If you've ever been in some of these message boards and chat rooms, and uh, some of them are just vile. So much anger and, and resentment and, and bitterness. And it's just not a good environment. If you're trying to learn to do something, I don't care what it is. If you're learning how to whittle a corn cob pipe, <clears throat> you you need you get the picture, right? We talked about this yesterday, and I put out a post, and I think even a video on it. It's so important that you surround yourself with people in in all areas of life that have similar goals, but also who are going to speak words of life into your life. The, the, the world has so much negativity and criticism and chaos going on. That's not, that's not a good environment for success. And, and I'm sure that's what you want out of this whole trading business, this trading venture, this journey that you're on. You want some positive, consistent, Success. We all do. What you allow to rent space in your head is very important.